We welcome all of you who are watching in living rooms or doing this study somewhere, uh, however, however you're doing that. Week five, can you believe that? And you're still here, right? Um, just, a, just a note, next week's Thanksgiving, but we will be here Wednesday morning. Uh, what better way to kick off that weekend and to get some word and... and uh, yeah, this is going to be a great weekend. So if, if you're traveling and can't be with us, we'll miss you. But I just wanted to, to remind you that we will be here. Uh, and we'll finish out next week. So let's read together our creed, Romans 13, 11 through 14. You guys going to help me out? Yep. All right, because there was a roar when I came out. <laughs> Why all this stress on behavior? It is time to wake up to reality every day. Let us be Christ men. Give no chances to the flesh. That's what I'm talking about. You guys, that's the best you stayed together yet. <laughs> Amen. So we have, you know, this is the fifth week in being the study, in the study of Josiah. And um, I can't wait. I'm, you know, I'm always looking forward. And so we'll take a break. Um, I have learned over the years for myself that if we just do study after study after study after study, we just, we get like constipated, right, with, with information. And so, well, what I like to do is take a break, but it's not a break from the work. You got to put the work in. It's just an opportunity to, ha to, to execute, to apply what we've learned. So don't take those folders and put them on a shelf and say, I'll just get to that the next time we re-up, that's not the point. The point is, is to take the information that you get, restudy it, apply it, and let God build your faith through the power of his word. Good? Um, and so that's why we kind of do these things in segments. It's not because I don't want to be with you every Wednesday morning. I love this. I love this time. I'm encouraged. But I do believe there's a space to apply what we learn. Good? So I say that to say we're not going to get done with Josiah Wednesday. <laughs> and man, I tell you, he goes to war against the enemy if you keep reading about his life. I mean, he demolishes things. And we're going to dig into that next semester. But this morning, we're going to dig into just, <laughs> oh man, it's going to be good. 2 Kings 22, 1 and 2. Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jediah, the daughter of Adiah of Boscath. And here it is. This, is. this is where we're trying to land. This is the desire of our heart. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in all the ways of his father David. He did not turn aside to the right or to the left. A life of focus. A life of purpose. And we know David wasn't his father, but any time that God refers to someone that has the heart of David, the heart after David, that is a very high compliment. Very high. Because God himself said, this is about David. This is a man after my own heart. Now, I want to speak to you just for a moment today on rediscovering the words of God. The words of God... And Look how, look, look how I phrased that. Not the word of God. The words of God. Because God's word is, are his words for you. That's why I often think it is very healthy. Like, you, you, some of you know me, know that my mind goes at a rapid rate. And so, 
when I have my time with the Lord, I listen as I read. And when you do that, there's no verse one, blessed is the man who walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way, verse two, nor stands in the way of the sinner, verse three. The narrator doesn't say that, right? It's a letter and they're God's words to you. I believe with all my heart, if you can, if you can change, like from the, from the perspective of this book just being God's word, when you say God's words, they become personal. I can send an informative email to you and that's the word on the subject. I can send a personal email to you and that becomes my words to you. Do you see that? And so we've established to encourage means to give courage, right? So when you look at the Bible as God's words to you, does that make sense? It's just a revelation that's becoming more and more true in my life every day. So we have worked through, I won't recap for the sake of time. Uh, I wanna be very respectful of your time. We've worked through some of Josiah's life. We'll go back to verse eight, 2 Kings 22. Pivotal moment. Josiah's already had a heart to restore the place of worship, the temple, which we know, reading through a New Testament lens, that is us now. For do you not know that you are the temple of God? And so you're, we, we've looked at softening our heart towards God and living a life of worship. Everything you do, man, Everything we do is an act of worship if it's done unto the Lord with a pure heart. Everything. This is a pivotal moment. Then Hilkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan, the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. I have found I have rediscovered. To rediscover something, you must have first, it, it, have, it must have first been lost, forgotten. Like, if you're married, you know there are seasons. Let, let's just do this. How many of you have been married uh, three years or less? Okay. Five years or less? Okay. Okay seven years or more. You look back on your marriage and in, in, in that relationship and you can identify seasons where there were, there were rough times. You know, the experts will tell you, year this, and I'm not even gonna speak it, right? This year and this year and this year might be rough and this year might be rough because you got financial stress, you got kids, you got you know, da, da, da. Yet, you can also point to times, hopefully, where you rediscovered joy and love in your marriage, right? And, and so, that's just such a great analogy because we're, we're the bride of Christ. These are his words to us. And so, if, if you've been pushing his words aside, if you have been neglecting uh, hearing from him through his word. This today is a challenge. Again, no fluff. Don't have time for fluff. I am way too busy to show up and give you something that's gonna make you feel good, right? I wanna challenge you this morning in the, in the sense that God's words are life and there's no way we can be the men he wants us to be in any capacity without his words taking root in our life. Josiah that the book is rediscovered. It's been covered up. Why? Because the enemy always wants to cover it up. If the enemy can't you get, get you caught up in sin, he'll get you caught up in busyness. Even doing things for the Lord. Anytime someone wants to serve in a high level volunteer capacity here, we ask the question like, how are you? How's your walk? Because what you do for God is nowhere near as important 
as what you do with God. Can't interchange the two. Let's look at some things that happen when we rediscover. Now, if you're just newly saved and you've not even discovered the gift of God's word, let's help you do that, right? Tell someone at your table, I don't know, you know how to read the Bible. Now, if your whole table looks at each other and says, I don't know how to read the Bible, then the whole table needs to come up <laughs> afterwards and we'll discuss that, right? None of us had to have it dialed in the whole way, but I believe in your conversations today, there are gonna be some things that click that might work for Terry that, that, that you know, quite possibly uh, Brad hasn't thought of. Good? All right. When we in fill in the blanks, if you wanna follow along, if that's not the way you think, just listen. When we rediscover the words of God, it brings clarity and purpose for life. Now, clarity, wisdom, direction, purpose. You will get lost in life if you don't have purpose. Let's take that a step further. You'll get lost in life if money is your purpose, if climbing the ladder is your purpose. Now, if that purpose is undergirded through kingdom advancement and, and you're, you're climbing the ladder, you're, you are building a business because God called you to do that for the kingdom, then you don't have a business purpose. You have a kingdom purpose. The Bible says in Hebrews that every one of us are ministers. We're ministers. We're ministers of the new covenant. You say, man, you don't know me. You know, uh, I'm, I am far from a minister. Oh, no, you are as a man of God. Now, watch this. 2 Kings 23, 1 and 2. So you go, go to, we went from the 22nd chapter to the 23rd chapter. Now, the king sent them together, all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem, to him. Catch this scene. The book of the law has been found because Josiah had a desire to restore and repair the place of worship. God will bless a heart that's after him. If you can't figure anything else out today, turn your heart towards God. Don't let the enemy tell you what you're not doing. You focus on what you are doing. In God, I will trust. He is my refuge. He is a strong tower. He is an ever-present help in time of trouble. There's clarity and purpose that come when you turn your heart to God. This is what Josiah is doing now. He now has found the book of the law. It's been read to him. He tore his clothes, talked about that last week. And then he gets a word from God through a prophetess that says, hey, I'm pleased with you because you have done this. Next semester, we'll get into the actions that follow because he began to do, not just hear. But what happens right here is he is so moved. He is so moved that he is the king of a culture, environment, a kingdom that has become so counter to what he has now rediscovered in the book in the words of God to his people. So now, he is wrecked. It only takes one wrecked man by God to start a fire that will burn. It will change things. Well, you might say, well, I'm not a king. Yeah, you are, you have a kingdom. Every one of you have a kingdom. Well, I had one, but I'm retired. Retirement's your kingdom, baby, you never retire. You, you don't, you don't get, we don't get to retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm retired. I'm busier than ever. It's, we're men of seasons. So now he, he takes the words of God. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and with him all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great, Think about this. There's another version that says the elders. There's another version that says leaders. So Josiah is starting, he starts with gathering 
people of influence. Because if you're ever gonna get a vision to have fuel and take flight, you gotta get people to buy into the vision and they're people of influence. I want you to hear this. Your economic status does not determine your level of influence. Who you are when no one is watching, that determines your level of influence. Character, integrity, a tender warrior. And so now Josiah is gathering together people of influence because he's got, he has to allow them to hear the words of God that he's heard. But not only hear them like, he needs them to hear them like he's heard them. He needs them to hear them. And I would imagine Josiah has been praying as he tore his robes, God, let this wreck men of influence like it has wrecked me. Because it's his kingdom. But now he knows it's God's kingdom and it's been led wrong. If you have been leading your family wrong, your marriage wrong, your business wrong, that's okay. Maybe you haven't had the knowledge. Maybe you didn't get the email. It's not your family. It's not your business. No, it's your gifts and God gives them and they're unrevocable. What you do with them is up to you. So when you, when you turn those things over to the Lord, then you begin to operate with a kingdom mindset. Good? So he, he pulls influencers together, then the priests and the prophets. Mm, I don't have time to go into that. Some of those were not good people and they paid for that later. The priests and the prophets, but this is important, and all the people, both small and great, and he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found in the house of the Lord. Man, you think I preach long sometimes. Can you imagine? Like he, and you're not gonna sit down either. You're gonna stand up, you're gonna honor the word of God, and you are going to, like, you're gonna absorb this. Here's the great thing about this scenario to me. He calls influencers. He calls, he calls people who are called full-time to serve God, the priest. He calls people, the prophets, that are called to speak on behalf of God. Then he calls all people, both small and great. What is he doing? He's giving the opportunity for a person to grab what he has taken hold of to go from being small to great. Paul told Timothy, do not let anyone despise your age. Age, gray hair does bring wisdom, but listen to me, it only brings wisdom if we learn from our mistakes or a bald head in, in some of our cases. Hey, man, a lot of you wear that good. I mean, how much trouble does that save you, right? So, Think about this, the words of God taking root in your heart will bring a new purpose. When you begin to rediscover the words of God for your life, it will flow, it will, it will literally turn you into a person of influence. See, don't let your talent take you where your character can't keep you. But if you grow your character through the words of God that apply to your life, the gifts and the talents that he's put in you, they'll, they'll run hand in hand together and you will be a tender warrior, a kingdom man, and you'll get to heaven one day and God will say, well done, that good and faithful servant because you worked on your character. I gave you the gifts. They worked in tandem and you made a difference. You were a person of influence. Amen. Not a, maybe a, necessarily a person of fame in the way that the world would describe it, so what's happening here, the words of God are floating out into the hearts of people. The purpose, the clarity, the leader, Josiah, is trying to bring to those around him. 
he realizes, I can't do this on my own. So I'm just gonna let the power of the words of God go forward and I'm gonna let God be God and those that receive it are gonna have an opportunity to then have a new purpose, a new clarity on life. How many of you just yesterday were asked a question that you didn't know the answer to? Well, for the rest of you, you're just smarter than us. Okay, how many of you have been or are going through a circumstance and you finally decided, I can't do this, I can't fix this? When we get in those places, we, we could find ourselves in a storm, in a situation, and we don't, we don't know which way to go. There's no clarity. There's no vision has been cut off. God, how is this gonna work out? I don't see how this is gonna turn around, right? But if you've rediscovered the word of God, if you've got the pylon driven deep in your life, that it does not matter how much sleep I got, it does not matter how I feel, it does not matter what my day holds, that alarm's going off, that coffee is making, that word is waiting, God's got something for me today, and I am gonna receive it because I know that if I do, I can do the day, and the day will not do me. Amen. It is life, Psalms 119, 105, Many of you would know this. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When this is written, there were no indoor bathrooms. There were no street lights. There were no iPhones with a flashlight. So if you needed to walk around at night, I know this is for some of you not new information, but for some of you it may be. If you needed to walk around at night, then what you would do is, is you would tie a lamp around one of your legs. Now get this. And what it would do is, because vipers and snakes and things were a, a, a very real issue, what it would do is, is it would give you light for the next step. See, when we don't know, when we, we don't have wisdom, when we're at wit's end, and we begin to doubt ourselves, can I hear from God? Man, come on, don't say you've never been there. Like, come on, can I, can I, God, was that really you? This is what God will do. He's done it in my life time and time again, and he's probably done it in yours. If you have a pattern of reading the, word of, the words of God every morning, then ride along in that reading, ride along. You might not get the big picture, but you're gonna get light for the next step on the path that he has you on. Amen. Young man came up to me not too long ago. No idea the situation I, I, I was going through at the time. And he said, hey, I want you to know. Now, young man, I call it young men, young men. Like, what is young? I watch college basketball these days. I, I, when I watch college basketball these days. I'm like, dear Lord, they let a 14-year-old go to college. <laughs> yeah, football. These, these huge dudes take their helmet off, man. They're not even shaving yet. And I'm like, I'm getting old. This young man comes up to me, so you define that however you want. Pastor Jason, I just want to let you know, your sermon, it reminded me of this, one of my favorite co quotes from one of my favorite books. And it's something like The Fox, The Mole, and something else, and something else. Um, not important. And, and so, there's a boy, and there's a horse, and they're in a storm. A blizzard of, like, great proportion. Boy, I can't see a way forward. Horse. Can you see the next step? Boy, yes. Horse, then just take the next step. 
Let that, let that speak to some of you this morning. The weight of leading a family, the weight of leading wherever God has you, can, it can drive you to hide in the right place or it can drive you into the word of God, the words of God for your life, and it will bring light, it will bring clarity, maybe not for the outcome, but it will give you what you need for the next step. Receive that this morning, because I feel strongly in my spirit. Some of you right now are trying to make decisions with very important matters, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Look, stay in the word, take the next step. It's a lot easier for God to pull you back from one step than it is from a mile right, going the wrong way. It's a light for my path. The word of God, the words of God to you will bring purpose, Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. One version said, it will complete the purpose for, for which it was sent. God's words were sent to us in the Holy Scriptures. They were, they were sent from the throne of God to his beloved through the Spirit of God. And if you will stay and rediscover, I'm trying to, that rediscover, I'm trying to get you to buy into the idea of falling back in love with the words of God for your life. And, and this is how you get passionate about something because we're selfish people. If you don't think you're selfish, you're way more selfish than you think you are. Yeah. You, you don't think you're self-centered? I dare you to do this. The next time you're in a group photo and that photo is sent to you on your phone, or it's passed to you, see if you're not the first person you look at. <laughs> it's a fact. Like, right. was my belly poking out? Did I suck my chest and I know? Right. Did I have, you get the point. Yet, selfishly, I'm trying to give you the byproduct of falling and rediscovering the words of God because we all want to prosper. We, we all want to live on purpose. We don't want to float around without a purpose aimlessly. That's the devil's playground. But the word of God falling on good soil in a tender warrior's heart, it will bring purpose to your day. It will bring purpose and clarity to your life. God's promise is I will not allow my words. It's... It's sowing and reaping. It's going to fall on good soil because you've repaired the temple and it's going to produce because you can't argue with sowing and reaping. The purpose for which he created you is found in his words to you. Maybe not for the plan for the rest of your life, but the plan for the next step. So now we get clarity. Now we get purpose. I could give you so many scriptures on this. You, the, the, the character behind a man, blessed is a man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. In other words, blessed is a man who doesn't get involved in the drama that the devil wants to create in his life. But he delights in the words of God. And in those words, he meditates day and night. He shall be planted like a tree beside streams of living water, bearing forth fruit in every season of his life. Whether you're in survival season, success season, or significant season, you're not retired season. In that season, if you'll stay planted in the words of God for you, you're gonna bear fruit for those around you in your kingdom. Purpose, clarity. Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Let me show you how this breaks down. I'm 51. 
I can read. Psalms 119, 105. And I did. Last night, late last night, or early this morning, at some point. And that to me, that verse, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light, light into my path, means something in, entirely different to me at 51 than it did at 31. I'm sure it's going to mean something. Some of you could probably tell me. I'm sure it's going to mean something different at 61. It certainly means something different to me now than it did when I was 21. But it means something. See, when the, when, when the apostle says, this book's alive, what it really means is, it is enough for every season. It lives with you through the seasons and it will minister to you bring clarity and purpose for you see some of you you remember when you didn't need much clarity and purpose because you didn't have kids or you didn't have grandkids or you didn't have so much stuff to take care of right so you didn't need to trust God as much or you, at least you didn't think you did so Hopefully that ministers to you because Jehovah Rapha, he's my healer. Henry Blackaby wrote Experiencing God years ago. It's a study I may rediscover and we may do that as men together one day. His ministry is taking off. He is just he tells a story. Part of experiencing God is not on Sundays. It's part of it. It's every day. And so he had had a habit for years of getting up in the morning and letting the words of God in, in a reading plan, okay? Not just... Let me see where I landed. I don't have glasses. Let me see if I can do this. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more like what is the gates of Zion what, that has nothing to do with me today God and God's like well you just played peekaboo with the word <laughs> now Henry Blackaby tells the story that his daughter began to get sick and they couldn't figure out what was wrong with her 14 years old Doctor after doctor after, and finally, on her 15th birthday or right around her 15th birthday, they called him, the daughter, and the mom in and said, hey, look, we don't know how we missed this, but she's got major leukemia. Devastating. What, what are her chances? Slim. Slim. She has cancer all over her body. Now, he is the priest of the home. He is this renowned speaker. He is sought by many. He is writing discipleship curriculum that is changing people's lives. And he says, but in that moment, I had no idea what to do. What do I tell my daughter and my wife and her siblings? I can fix everybody else's problems, but now there's a problem on my doorstep that I can't fix. I'm Henry Blackaby. Ha! That's not Henry Blackaby. He's a very humble man. Goes home. Tucks his daughter in bed. Daddy. Am I going to be okay? Sweetie, you're going to be okay. You think about the scenario. You go to the bedroom. There's your wife. Honey, what are we going to do? It's, it's going to be okay. Go to sleep. He then sits all night just processing, but at his allotted time, Coffee goes off. 
He moves from where he's at to his secret place. Goes to his reading plan. Begins to read. And right in that day, that day, you don't tell me God's not in the details. I hate when people say the devil's in the details. Screw that. No. God orders my steps. Right in his reading for the day. Jesus says this sickness will not be unto death yet that so God can be glorified. Woo! You can't. You can can start looking scriptures up on healing and you can claim them. But when God comes in like that because you have a daily routine of hearing his words, you know for a fact that from the foundation of the earth, he set up that exact time, that exact moment for that exact day because he knew Henry Blackaby's daughter was going to be diagnosed with cancer the day before Henry Blackaby had a pattern of reading God's word every morning. And here comes God with a voice like a thousand rivers coming into that room and taking those big arms and wrapping them around this man of God and saying, this sickness is not going to be unto death, but so that I get the glory. Here I am 24 years later encouraging you with this story because some man decided I am going to spend time in God's word Every day, not because he was writing curriculum, not because he was a great speaker, not because God had given him wisdom to bring revelation out of the word. No, because he knew that he could not let his intellect, his talent carry him where his character couldn't keep him. So he knew that he needed to be a man of God for himself and for his family. And now he goes and wakes up his daughter. He doesn't just hear that for himself. He takes a step of faith and wakes her up and says, sweetie, it's time for school. God's got you. He's going to heal you. You just keep taking the next step. My God. My God. You can't make that stuff up. But God doesn't respect Henry Blackaby any more than he does you because he's no respecter as a person. Well, yeah, I can see how God would do that for someone else, but for me, absolutely. Because they're his words for you. They're his words for you. A new purpose. I want to make sure I give you guys time to to process this. What's a good, like, 15 minutes at your table? Is that good? Extroverted people are saying 25. (laughs) Introverted people are saying 5. Surely introverted people will start leaving here any minute. Don't have to be at work till eight, but they're they're like, I'm not making eye contact with anybody. Purpose and clarity. Josiah begins to read the words of God. And what happens is, is his atmosphere, his kingdom, It begins to saturate. What if it was said of you? Can't change yesterday. Change today. What if it was said of you? My dad, my grandpa, my husband created a new legacy in our family through purpose and clarity because he would not negotiate with a clock when it came time to hear the words of God for the day. It's called legacy. Talked about it last week. You can literally, watch this. You can literally change the trajectory. And I, I hear that this is for somebody right now. I've made too many mistakes. I've sown too many bad seeds. My kids, my grand, my wife, I've burned too many bridges. All they see when they look at me is someone who caused pain. You know what you're going to do today? You're going to start today. You're going to pray for a crop failure on those seeds that you sowed. 
and, and you're going to change. You're going to change the atmosphere by changing your heart first. And you're, you're going to become a man of God because you're going to begin to hear his words, do his words. Now, your wife, look at you, and I've said this before. Uh, but he, he, this, this is a little, he just got a little fired up at Bible study. This ain't going to last. Your kids, oh, dad will be right back to yelling at us before long. He'll be right back to those 20-hour work days before long. And sometimes we have those days. Sometimes you got to look at your kids and say, you got to eat, right? But even in those 20-hour work days, guess what dad did first? Yeah. People, people say, well, the morning's just not my time. I've used that before. What you're doing, if you wait to the end of the day to go to your secret place, you're giving God what's left of you. Pastor Casey, I'm just not a morning person. Who is? You know, get some coffee. Well, I don't drink. That's Pentecostal liquor. I don't do that. My God, there's so many energy drinks out there right now. Like, the point is, make it a priority to tithe your first part of the day to the creator of your day. Because, you know, some of you young guys, you can still sleep. Praise the Lord. I mean, you, you don't get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom yet. So you think, like, well, I'll be able to get up early at some point. It doesn't get any easier. A warrior decides before they go into battle, the vision is victory. The strategy is, this is going to take all of me. Right? The goal, uncompromised. I will not compromise that time. Vision, strategy, goals, schedule. You got to work the schedule. We all get the same amount of time in our lives every day. Man. So I'll end with this. This is, this is what God's words about Josiah were. 2 Kings 22, 25. 23, 25. Now before him, there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all of his heart. Your parents may have been derelicts. Dysfunction may run rapid in your bloodline. You may have every excuse. We dealt with that the first week of this study, right? Like Manasseh, his good evil stuff. Yet, watch this. Josiah turned the compass of his family. He got a new purpose. He got new clarity. And now we see we get to the end of all Josiah did before his death. And God says of him, now before him there was no king like him. What's your last name? Say it out loud. One, two, three. Great God. Mine's Byers. What if it were said by my children, my grandchildren, There was never one before him that sought the Lord like he did. It was unnegotiable. What if it were said that about you? There has never, there's never been a man as smart as my dad. His career was amazing. You know what that does? 
that sets a, a standard for your child that maybe that's not the path God has for them. So they live it and their whole life is disappointment. But what if it was said of you, never before, we can't find, we don't have a family Bible. We don't have, like, we don't pray. Before my dad, no one prayed. What if it was said of you? Never before in any generations that we could find was there a man like Izzy who, who said, you know what? I know God's real. I know his words for me are real and I'm gonna change like legacy, a forward mindset that affects the past, future. What if it was said by those, see those closest to you should trust you the most. Never before him was there, there was no king like him. There was no man like him who turned to the Lord with all of his heart, with all of his soul, and with all of his mind. It takes all of your heart, it takes all of your soul, and it takes all of your mind to get your ass a toner out of bed. <laughs> isotoner, I said isotoner. Think about that. It takes all of you. But guess what gets fed? All of you. All of you gets fed. It will be a war against your flesh if this is a new pattern. You will war. You like to have a few drinks before you go to bed and those few drinks have turned into a few drinks and you're, you're thinking right now, well, I'm not that clear in the morning. You gotta decide what's more important. You gotta decide, are those few drinks more important? Or is getting the words that God has for you for that day more important? See, you gotta man, we gotta man up. Let's man up. Let's get some priorities and know that we can't do what God's called us to do without his words in our life. Nor after him did any arise. Now watch this. The greatest thing you can do to have purpose and clarity in your life is to get with God every day. And no longer, let's not, let's not any longer say, I got in the word. What if we change that to I absorbed, received, fell in love with God's words for me today. They're for me. I got one Bible that has my name on it. My dad gave it to me when I left the business I was in and went into full-time ministry. And every time, I, let, I don't travel with that Bible anymore. I'm out of time, I got a funny story about that, but um, I often get that Bible out and before I'll open it, I'll look at my name. Jason G. Byers. Been seasons of my life where I, I didn't want to read that name out loud because I was disappointed in myself. I didn't like me. But every time I look at that, it's like, okay, God, you wrote this book for me. And when you when you start thinking that way, these words are not so far from your circumstance. They're really not. Because he wrote them for you for you. So, let's rediscover the words of God for our life. Amen? Let's take the challenge and go hard after God. Don't brag about it with your family. Don't just let it start being a pattern. If you live alone, that's okay. Good for you. It should be way easier. Let it be a pattern. Let it be a pattern. Good. No sports, no politics, no weather. You guys enjoy one another. Encourage one another. What's that mean? To give courage. I love you.